In the previous part, we talked about Schrödinger's equation, which he produced in late 1925 and 1926, spurred by the work of the young French physicist Louis de Broglie. Quantum mechanics is a very interesting, unintuitive and important field, and Schrödinger's equation plays a fairly substantial role. However, it is worth noting that the equation Schrödinger produced was in fact the second formulation of quantum theory, the first having been produced by Werner Heisenberg, Max Born and Pascual Jordan, who formulated an equivalent in 1925. Unfortunately, they did so using matrices which are harder to manipulate, and while they were indeed correct, Heisenberg won the Nobel Prize in 1932 for this work, though he was apparently unhappy that Born and Jordan were not honoured along with him. It was not widely used. This matrix mechanics was, nevertheless, the first complete and correct definition of quantum mechanics. Schrödinger himself made note of the relation between his wave mechanics and matrix mechanics in his 1926 papers. While the Schrödinger equations are indeed very useful, they are also non-relativistic. This was, however, rectified by the British physicist Paul Dirac, who produced a version of the equation that complied with relativity in 1928. Dirac would go on to share the Nobel Prize with Schrödinger in 1933. As soon as Schrödinger published his papers, he received offers from many institutions around the world to hold guest lectures, and in early 1927 he travelled to the United States to give a series of lectures at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. So impressed was the university that they offered him a permanent professorship, but Schrödinger turned this offer down as he had received word that he was in strong contention as a replacement for the retiring Max Planck as chair of theoretical physics at the Humboldt University of Berlin. He was well loved in Zurich and himself enjoyed Switzerland, with the administration and students urging him to stay. However, in autumn of 1927, likely in part due to the personal mediation of Max Planck, Schrödinger took up the post in Berlin. Here his peers would include Max von Laue, Lise Meitner and Albert Einstein. Between 1927 and 1933, political upheavals in Germany had led to the rise of the Nazi party into power, and in 1933, as Hitler was elected Chancellor, Schrödinger resolved to leave Germany. He would move to the University of Oxford, where he lectured on quantum mechanics. When he requested to be moved, he asked for Arthur March to be his assistant. The reasoning for this is down to Schrödinger's liking for women. He was in love with March's wife, Hilda. He had had many lovers with the knowledge of Annie, his wife, who herself had a lover in one of Schrödinger's friends, Hermann Weil. Many scientists fleeing Germany spent the summer of 1933 in the Italian region of South Tyrol, and here Hilda became pregnant with Schrödinger's child, before she and the Schrödingers moved on to Oxford. In early 1934, he was invited by Princeton to lecture there, and while there, offered a permanent position. While he negotiated salary and conditions, in the end he did not accept, likely due to the unacceptability of the complex relationship between Schrödinger, Annie and Hilda. The complex relationship, Schrödinger basically had two wives, even though Hilda was still married to March, was not exactly welcomed with open arms at Oxford either, but nevertheless, in May of 1934, Hilda gave birth to Schrödinger's daughter, Ruth Georgie Erika. In 1935, he would produce his famous Schrödinger's Cat Paradox in a three-part essay titled The Present Situation in Quantum Mechanics. This will be the focus of the first portion of the next part in this series. Thanks for watching.